In the summer of 2021, my wife and I embarked on our first cross-country overland expedition. During those five weeks, we covered over 8,000 miles as we made our way from Connecticut to California, then north to Washington State, before returning to the East Coast. It was an adventure of a lifetime. 12 national parks, 25 nights in our tent, and more lifelong memories than I can count. It's been two years since that trip, and now we've returned to the one state that captured our hearts like no other. This is our Colorado expedition. This series of Varsity Overland is supported by Diodynamics, Rollercam, Rocky Talkie Mountain Radio, and FNF Specialty Vehicles, Connecticut's premier vehicle outfitter. We'll be making this journey in our 2021 Chevy Colorado ZR2, affectionately named Goose. It's seen a few lighting and armor upgrades since its last touch Colorado soil, courtesy of our friends over at FNF Specialty Vehicles in Portland, Connecticut. But more on the truck build later. Now, let's kick off the first leg of this adventure with a seven hour drive from Connecticut to Pennsylvania and our first campsite of the trip. So we made it to our first official campsite of the Colorado expedition. We are in the Allegheny National Forest of Pennsylvania, and this is a really cool spot right here next to this creek. We'll park it here for tonight. We're going to break down, take everything out, see whether or not stuff moved during transit, find a new home for any of our gear if we have to, and then uh, start transforming goose into camping mode. My wife, Michelle, will be the lead navigator and chef on this trip, while our dog, Pepper, will focus most of her attention on getting up into the tent because she's too good to lay on the ground. We'll be testing out a new camp configuration over the coming weeks due to the recent addition of an Overland Vehicle Systems 270 degree awning to the bed rack. Speaking of the bed rack, our trusted Yakima Overhaul HD rack and accessories will be experiencing its second cross-country outing. Topping off the rear of the truck is an iCamper SkyCamp 2.0. It is the first and only rooftop tent we have ever used and has sheltered us from numerous stormy nights over the past three years. Other, more recent additions to the build include a Fab Four's hidden winch front bumper with a 12,000 pound synthetic winch and Factor 55 Fairlead. Two pair of Diodynamics Amber SS3 pods used as fog and ditch lights. A Midland GMRS radio to communicate with our Rocky Talkies on the trail and a couple Front Runner Wolfpack cargo boxes atop the Prince who designed roof rack for extra storage. Lastly, we have the AEV snorkel, or raised air intake if you're feeling fancy. This will come in handy very soon as we drive through the dust of Southern Colorado, which might as well be New Mexico.
So what are we looking forward to most about this trip? Well, that's a big question. There's actually a long list of things that we've been looking forward to as far as Colorado is concerned, but I think I can narrow it down to two or three. Um, biggest thing that we're looking forward to is revisiting the site where we got engaged. I proposed to my wife in Colorado, so that's kind of a big deal to return to the uh, San Isabel National Forest and get to see that exact spot. Um, it was also the last trip that we took cross country with um, our old dog. And uh, there, there'll be some nostalgic moments up in the mountains being able to kind of like, hopefully, you know, feel her presence and kind of just enjoy uh, the memories that we made in Colorado uh, now that she's no longer with us. And then I guess to top everything off, it's the start of summer. We're just looking forward to some great weather and uh, just being able to finally slow down, relax, and just and, and enjoy an adventure that we've been looking forward to for about two years now. Unfortunately, our summer excitement would have to be postponed on account of rain. So we packed up our wet things the next morning and headed west to our next stop in Indiana. One of the benefits about driving through multiple states in a single day is that it's very likely you'll experience a change in weather. And by the time we arrived at our second campsite that night, it was clear that summer was back on track. So what do you think? I think it's a good spot. I think, I think it'll do for the night. It doesn't have any uh, water or, you know, like a river like last night, but this is only one place, one stop on our, on our trip towards Colorado. So when you're doing this, can't be too picky. Got to settle with whatever you come across. And to be honest, this is a pretty, pretty decent spot. It's wide open. It's got some really cool lighting with the uh, sun coming through the trees at the moment. There is a little rabbit that's running around. I'm gonna have to take care of uh, take care of the dog. Make sure she doesn't have a little snack with that rabbit. But I think it'll do for the night. And by it'll do for the night, what I mean is let me drive around with my tent open until I find the perfect position for the truck. Don't try this at home, kids. The uh, campsite we used last night in Indiana, there were a couple questionable plants surrounding our tent, surrounding that site. And once we left and got service, Michelle was able to do a little research and pretty much almost possibly, maybe 99%, we're kind of sure, confirm that it might have been poison ivy or poison sumac or poison oak or something. So between us walking around it and the dog, we're pretty much just waiting for the poison ivy bomb to drop. So, stopped at this uh, rest stop, do a little cleanup, and just keep our fingers crossed because we both are severely allergic to poison ivy, so. Fortunately, we left Indiana without suffering any allergic reactions and found ourselves at a private campground in Missouri. During this trip, we'll see a variety of campsites from free dispersed camping to campgrounds with reservations like this one. There's pros and cons to both, which I'll mention periodically. 
In this instance, we were able to meet some cool new people interested in this rooftop tent thingy on the truck and use the Wi-Fi to check the forecast, which wasn't pretty. So we decided to leave our campsite at 3 o'clock in the morning before the storm started, instead of trying to break down our tent and everything else in the rain and wind. Okay, it's like a scene from a scary movie. A storm is brewing. We're in the middle of Missouri, almost over the border into Kansas. The rain is about to start. Did I mention it's 4.30 in the morning? And we've been driving since 3.30. After a few hours of driving through the storm, we passed into Kansas, which is where the excitement of overland travel really started to pick up. In our next episode of the Colorado Expedition, we'll finally experience some off-road driving in Kansas and make it to our first iconic destination within Colorado. Thank you so much for watching and joining us on this adventure. We appreciate your interest as well as the support from companies who help make these videos possible.